Ah, greetings. I am Nikolai Tesla. Oh. Nikolai, as you may know me. Very I nice prefer Nikolai in the human, in the English language because it's more masculine, but Nikolai is my actual name. Mm. Well, welcome. Welcome to the Hukalo uh, webinar. <laughs> Uh, we do have some questions and um, maybe some new people have some questions because I only have uh, uh, one more person who's lined up, but uh, we have Carrie and if she wants to uh, ask her question, she can ask it now. There are questions for me. Hello. It is my time to uh, start to be a little more present to the earth and start to make myself known a little more. So please ask your question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're the right person to ask, but I feel a particular being around me lately, and I was just wondering if you could tell me who that was. I can check with someone else. Uh, identifying beings is not my forte, but I can check with someone who will do that. One moment, please. Thank you. Oh, interesting. Um, what part of the world do you live in? I live in North Carolina. Interesting. Is it near a city or out in the country? I'm in the country, but it's sort of near Asheville, a city. I see, because this is a being that usually takes, um, comes to the earth and they're not supposed to land on the earth or be on the earth, but they have been landing in an area near to you that seems to be out away from the city. Uh, this person's name is Vensuta and they have a friend named Tenzu. Uh, these are who are visiting you, but not, they are not walking into your home necessarily, but they are astral projecting themselves around you. Um, they seem to want to take you on one of their voyages. They want you to actually interact. There's a few people on the planet that they, they want to uh, take on actually a, a journey. And you are one of those people. Have you been asking for this kind of thing? Yes. That is why they are there. Vincentu cool. and Tenzu. Cool. Uh, they're benevolent, I'm assuming. Yes, and they are Yu Yu. Ah, okay. Okay. Is that cool. every, does that relate to you as well? Yes, 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 that's cool. Well, then this is the answer. I've been told by one of my friends that that is who is around you and has been looking at you for a while to take you on a Star Trip journey. Cool, how exciting. But I don't know if they will be able to quite yet. There are too many things happening on your uh, planet for them uh, too much surveillance for them to actually land right now um, both east and west of the Mississippi are being very much uh, looked at by radar and by many things and um, there are many sightings in the skies they're telling me many things right now so but um, yes that is their purpose for being around you. Awesome. Thank you for that. And then can I ask just one last question? Certainly. That is, are you, would you be able to tell what my life was like in Atlantis? Oh, well, I'm connected with my friend here, so and he knows those kinds of things. So your life in Atlantis was, one moment please, Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You've had more than one life in Atlantis, for one thing. But the greater of the lives was uh, in the council. You weren't one of the five, the five leaders of it, but you were in the the element at large, which means there was a council of the Atlanteans and Lemurians that was a, a sort of a, a council at large, and you were part of that. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Blessings. Much love. I have a question. There is a question in the room. One moment. Please, please. go ahead. Can you come to the microphone, wherever it is? I have a question. A Speak into of, the microphone. A couple weeks ago, I was got up during the night to go to the kitchen to get a drink, and I had this fear come over me. Was there somebody or something in the apartment? One moment, and I will check with my friends. These are questions that I don't usually answer, but um, one moment, please. Yes, there was uh, unusual visitors to you. They were of a, not of a positive species, but they were of a uh, insectoid species okay. that were around you and your dogs were also reacting mm -hmm. to this. This is twice. Yes. Okay, thank you. Your dogs thank also you. reacted to them, on. yes. We also have another question here in the room. Ah, in the room. Yes. Can, come to me. And it's Lydia. Lydia. Ah, yes. Lydia. yes. Come, to, come here. <laughs> yes. Um, so I was wondering what my family's connection to Atlantis might be. Okay. Lydia, by the way, is, um, oh, should I tell them? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay? <laughs> Lydia was my mother in a prior life. In the life that I was Nikolai Tesla, Lydia was my mother. If you want to see what she looks like, take a look into the camera. So. Hi, Mom. Yeah. And your question is, what is your connection to Atlantis? Like my family, like with my mom and my brother. Ah, one moment. Like I said, these are questions for my friends. Because my connection is more to engineering and inventions and things of that day but it's all right i will that will will be something i can give for you one moment you've all had different lives on atlantis and not all at the same time but you and no i'm listening you and Herb had lives together, and you and Herb had lives together in Atlantis. You both had, all three of you had two lives in Atlantis each, but you were not all together at all every time. You were a, a, what they might call a magistrate at that time. Um, law enforcement magistrate, you were a crystal worker in the mines at one time. They had mines on Atlantis. Oh, it was a diamond mine, not a crystal mine. I'm sorry. The diamonds that were, they found there have never been recovered. Herb was a musician and also he was an artist. But he was an artist and musician in one of the lives. In the other life, he was a communicator of some sort. Of a, Oh, he was part of the Toning Church of the Hathors that visited the Atlantean culture. Yes. And you knew him during that life, when he was a toning minister. 
he was like a, a religious leader for Toby. Go ahead. Any other question? Well, I wanted to say the other week when the power went out in our neighborhood. Yes. And I had this big feeling of peace of everything would be fine if it never came back on because you would come with your inventions to help us. And then that yeah. second, the power came back on. Wow, so interesting. Thank you for that message, I guess. Um, yes. And my other question was, how was I related to you in the lifetime when Lydia was your mother? Was that your sister? One moment. And yes, you were related to me at that time as well, mm -hmm. because you are very connected family-wise in your incarnations, for the most part, not always on Earth. Mm -hmm. But in that lifetime, actually, you were my grandmother. Oh, okay. okay. You were my grandmother. Good. Mm -hmm. So, mother and grandmother. It's nice to know you in this lifetime. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I have a question from David Waller. Yes. Um, his In the Bible, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the Lord, the great it's in Malachi. Yes. Um, he wants to know, his specific question is, is this the the Elijah that he's talking about that we spoke to today? Is this the Elijah? Malachi was Jim's former higher self. Elijah is now his form, is his higher Correct. self. So, it, yes, it is. It is the Elijah of the Bible that they're talking about? It would be, yes. Thank you for your, our conversation the other night, too. You're welcome. Is there any other questions? I can answer more technical questions than I can answer spiritual questions. <laughs> I've been through rather a lot of social training recently because I was <laughs> told that my manners were not the best. <laughs> well, but now I have come into a greater understanding of um, how to be a little bit more social. You see, when I was on the earth and lived my life there, I was not a very happy, social, or friendly person. And so I had not a good reputation for getting along well with anyone, really. So now I am working on my demeanor. And I must say, I understand that I can like people again and connect with them in a different way than I ever had before. And so this is a great joy for me to be able to be with you. Well, is there thank any you other very much? Questions? Yes, there's a question from Dawn and then from Christine. So, Dawn, ah, hello, Nicole. <clears throat> it's good to uh, talk to you. I was just wondering. I was wondering if the uh, crystalline engines that you explained to Pamela Erlen August eighth, twenty sixteen, are actively used now in the ICC ships of uh, yes. warp drive. Actually, they are. And even they have improved upon them since then. Um, there's, although you may think that there was no way to improve on them, there, were, there are several improvements that they made to them, and they are fine, fine machines at this time. How are you made aware of these? I relayed the message that you gave to Pamela Erlen that I posted ah, I on the web. Excellent. I understand. I was just wondering how the information got to you. <laughs> now, Al, ha, actually, Pamela asked if there's anybody that would like to post this information, and I accepted that. Challenge. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that because I am going to be coming around a little more often in the future. Thank you. You're welcome. It was nice to speak to you. Blessings to you, Nikolai. Thank you. Okay, Christine had a question. Christine. Greetings, um, Nikolai. Um, I was wondering um, 
in some of these um, remote places like um, the desert or uh, Indian reservations or in other places on um, other continents, can your small box or do you know if that small um, energy box is going to be used soon? To Eventually. Give? The governments know how to make them because they were something I had already made. Yes. And the instructions were left behind after I passed. And they have the full understanding of those energy boxes and how they work. Self-contained self and able to run for hundreds of years, maybe not forever, but for quite a long time because they recycle energy in a way that makes it fresh and vital again. And of course, you, after realizing that energy never dies and it always exists, it continues to move. And that once someone, um, you know, after a battery is dead, that means the energy has escaped and gone somewhere else and has become part of other energy fields. So therefore, with energy, energy never really dies, but it, it, it is brought into another field where there is other energy. So you may have energy escape and go somewhere else and become part of another energy field. But these boxes are able to contain that energy, not letting it escape and keeping it um, vital and moving and very strong. It has a sort of a, an amplification uh, to it as well, so that it does not, uh, in time, weaken. At, at one time, um, maybe last year sometime, somebody had posted how to make one on the internet and had um, told uh, and put a little referendum or a little note to it that if the government, government doesn't make it available within a certain amount of time they were going to go public with it and then oh, all oh. of a sudden everything disappeared absolutely your government does not want that kind of information out there at all because why because that would be the demise of all your electric companies and generators and things of this which employ thousands and thousands of people and so of course as soon as that information comes out and becomes common knowledge, then many people will lose their jobs. Can so, but it will have to happen eventually because things are changing and that kind of energy is no longer efficient enough. And, and the way that I have made the, the electric box, the little black box is efficient and will be used it will not look as like it did. It will not be like a little black box. They will make it into something quite different and much more elegant looking. But um, and it will be smaller. Uh, they've learned how to make the same thing in very tiny ways that are very powerful and will run for hundreds of years. But is it possible to um, inspire um, people like on the reservation that um, are way out there and don't have water and so on and so forth to inspire somebody there in these remote areas or in the remote Africa or remote wherever, remote, remote, <laughs> so that exactly. these, is it possible to um, get somebody out there to... Uh, yes, they... I'll tell you something very interesting. They, okay. they already exist out there. Oh, good. Okay. But they not just... in the same, they're, some of them have, some of them look like little white boxes. Some yes. of them look like uh, silver in, in essence. Some of them are little black boxes, but they do exist. But the government, if they knew that they existed in some of these places, they would take them out course but uh, or actually they would probably just shut them down there are ways to shut them down oh but um 
Yes. They exist already. And then the, the thing with the water too is um, like I, I've seen um, people, young kids create these things on how to collect water, the moisture in the air and turn it into water for places with no water. Things like this, are these going on just below um, the surface of the, um, the um, government so that these people oh, don't die? I, actually, they know about some of them already. Uh -huh. But they're they're in such small they're in such small degrees that they're really not making an effect on any of their money or profits. Okay. So they allow them to exist in some ways, so they can actually observe them for a while. As long as they because don't make they, they're public. making them, they're going to make them in much larger sizes. I know outside of um, uh, Bend, Oregon, where I live, they're just taking a lot of the desert and turning it into uh, solar panels. So, oh, yeah. yes, some places are good. Absolutely. Thank. Oh yes, and there will be. Yes. Uh, there will be many different discoveries of mine that are coming forth as time moves forward. Uh, Things have got to change. They don't have enough energies that are natural to continue with that. Although they say, oh, we just found thousands of gallons, millions of gallons of more under here or there. These things are inefficient compared to what I had to offer them. Yes. Thank you, Nikolai. You're welcome. Um, we have, uh, do you have time for another question, Nikolai, or? Yes. How are you doing? Okay, we have Amanda that wanted to ask a question. Amanda. Hello, can you hear me? Of course. Awesome. Hello, Nikolai. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Um, I find a very personal connection with trying to get people fed. Is there anything in your research that you've uncovered, like, you always hear about the replicator technology. Is there anything like that forthcoming soon? Replicator technology? Correct. Um, yes, it has already been discovered of how to do some re replicator technology. It, it goes with, it comes from the same technology that cloning comes from, uh, using s similar DNAs to, to make other people. They use similar um molecular structures and uh they they clone they they clone the molecular structures in some ways to do these these replic replications now the energy and the technology used to do that is not common knowledge but they do have it out there already you humans do have it very good and i also I'm sure you're aware of the Tesla model vehicles that are available and oh, yes. the upcoming models that are available. I very much want one because I love the idea of it, but yes. I am very concerned with the battery disposal. Is there a way that... Well, eventually, eventually there will be no disposal of the battery mm -hmm. because it will never die. Those, the same technology that's used in the black boxes for energy uh, continuation will be used in these batteries and so you won't have to dispose of them you can reuse them or re uh, invent a, uh, a way to use them or they can be continuously used in the car uh, as a car battery but there will be several different kinds of batteries of course but the disposal of them will not be necessary in the future the very fact that there is dis there is a disposal now tells you that they want uh, to continue to sell them and that they are not concerned about the waste. But of course, they're in the future they will not have to be wasted. They can be recycled in many different ways. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. 
There's a question in the room. There's a question in the room, I am told. And who would that be? This is Erica again. I was Hello, wondering Erica. about your friendship with um, Mark Twain. If you could tell us a little bit about that. Would you talk about things like telepathy? What my she wants to know about my relationship with Mark Twain. Mark Twain was fascinated on by what I was doing. I could actually care less what he was doing. <laughs> but oh, sorry, oh. that was a little insensitive. Okay. But um, I mean, I was interested in some ways, but it was ho hum. So, <laughs> but yes, we did discuss. He was very interested in discussing technology. He was very interested in actually writing about him, but I don't didn't want him to do that because A, there was no way his understanding of what I was doing could be in his brain to translate it to paper. And so I, we had many discussions and we had many thoughts about that. And, and I thought he was a brilliant man, actually. I, I did love the way he could communicate with people and he was actually very tolerant with me because of course I was a little abrupt about some of his subject matter I go what the heck? <laughs> no bearing on anything as far as I was concerned but I uh, I said to and he just he told me what the bearing was that it had on America and what he was trying to do with his thought process and and how that my thought process and his thought process were very similar in the invention of things and his invention of characters and different things because his characters had to last for a long time too. They couldn't be just disposable characters and they couldn't be just disposable dialogues. They had to be dialogues and thought processes that would make a difference to people. And, and, and so I understood that, but it, it made no difference to me because I was not very social. So um, having said that, I was fascinated by the fact that he could be so social and that his life was uh, surrounded by many people and mine was not so. And when we did meet, if he wanted to bring someone along with him, I really frowned upon that. I didn't really want, I just would rather have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And if he was trying to have more than one conversation at a time, it was, I thought it was uh, annoying. But, um, but yes, I've changed a lot since then. So, but yes, I thought he was a fascinating person. And we argued about social things many times and about uh, our disagreement of uh, who, who people really were and how people really are. And he had a very different idea of society than I did. And he, I had a very different idea of what I was here to do than what he thought I was here to do, actually. He thought I was here to revolutionize uh, everything, and I saw that the world wasn't ready for that. But, and that is why uh, my conflict with Alexander Grand Bell was so severe, is because he was such a big mouth jerk. And he was saying, me, me, me. And I, and I was just saying, let me alone, basically. You do what you want to do. You think you're a great inventor. Um, you don't know a tenth of what I know. But I wouldn't tell him that. Well, I did tell him that. <laughs> um, I did say that. I, I have to be honest. I did tell him that I thought he was a little bit of a jerk. So we didn't get along very well. But things have changed, my life has changed, and this is a new experience, a new, a new, a whole new world. So does that answer your question? I'm oh, sorry about that. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, there's a question of, does Jim need any water? Is, is, uh, how's the channel doing? Is he? Um, 
he said it's about time to wrap up anyway, so it should be all right. Okay. I can answer another one more question and then we'll go. We do have one more question from Omran and uh, we'll let him go in and, and answer the question then. Excellent. That's good. Hello, Nicola. Greetings. I think I think I know you somewhere. Yes. Um, I have a question regarding Tesla technology and, and Tesla knowledge because I have remembered through astral experiences and dreams that many beings seek me out for such knowledge and Tesla technology where I give them these knowledges and technologies but at sometimes I take it back from them by force because they misuse it. Um, well, am I yes. some kind of akasha of these yeah, knowledges? information you are bad I felt like I was some kind of source of information or a yes, yeah. and I know why you take them back because the Tesla coil the field generator and all those that you have that, that you, that's the name you put on them have, are the basis for many different kinds of inventions and many different kinds of uh, energy conduction and uh, conductiveness or whatever you want to say it, however you say it. But they are great conductors, but they are also uh, great amplifiers of energy and great uh, producers of uh, energies that are not normal or, and not likely to be around just in the air, but uh, can, be, can produce uh, different kinds of energies that can uh, be used for transporters, uh, many kinds of weaponry, which is not what they are there for, but they can be used for weaponry and for transportation, um, many kinds of things. Yes, yes, exactly. And 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 from this experience, I it was kind of funny because it was like the whole society was coming after me for this technology and finally I gave it to them and they were really happy and they used crystals to to work on it and then I warned them that I will always keep an eye on them and all that they will all their inventions will come back to me and I will know about it so it was uh, yeah yes the the undying energy sources are the things that are most interesting the energy sources never die. And to be able to keep them alive and useful for hundreds of years or even eternity, if you knew how to do it properly, is, is like um, the greatest thing that you can ever invent. And so I feel very humbled by the fact at this point, at one point I felt very like I was the king of the world, but at this point I'm very humbled by it because it still is not in use to the point where it should be and it's not creating the lifestyles that it should be and it's not being used for the positivity that it, it once was so oh I'm not sure what that is. It looks like the eye of Ra or something. <laughs> yes. Well, I was, I was thinking of, of. I have been fascinated by, by, that you wrote that the numbers three, six, and nine were secrets to the universe, and I have been exploring a lot with them regarding magic and how to use them with geometries. So I found that three is the triangle, and is connected with our psyche, and it should be able to to stimulate our mind or third eye in some ways. Yes. Is I it, see that. Is the way? Oh, okay. Okay, I am I'm seeing the I'm understanding it, but you see my mind works technological. So I turn it into a, a technology symbol and turn it into technology the way you have it written out that way. And so that's very interesting. I could make that into technology. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. Yes, I understand it. Yes. It can be. 
Thank you very much, Nicola. That was it for You're me. You're welcome. And, and see it you. is time for me to go. I did, what, is there another question? There's always many, many questions, but we have we are we are done right now. We always have much love many questions. To you. Much love to you. I Thank am, you so um, very much. Oh my goodness. I'm enjoying talking to you, but I know the time is up and I must go. And I have not been as polite continuously as I am supposed to be, but I'm still working on them. I'm a work in progress, as they call it. So please forgive me. Blessed be, Tekla. Blessed be. Yes, I have heard that before. <laughs> Much Sorry, there love. was an explosion outside of my house. <laughs> I had to run and an see what it was. An explosion? Yeah, it was some kids lighting off some fireworks. Ah, so, mm, a, having fun. Yeah. I believe it is <laughs> around the 4th of July, yes. Independence mm. Day for the United States. Yes. Very well. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Namaste and blessings to you. Ugh.